Hey guys, and welcome back to the Science of Exercise. In this video, I'm going to go over various aspects on how to squat and then even go over the muscles involved. So, hope you guys enjoy. Without further ado, here's how to squat. So up first is finding feet width for the squat. So I find that taking a small little leap into the air and then seeing where your body has a tendency to land naturally is an optimal position for the squat. This generally has the feet placed just outside of the hips, and you can see this with the arrows. So the knees should track over top of the toes during the squat. As you can see here, the knees are facing in the same direction that the toes are. Now we're gonna look at angling our feet in the proper position for the squat. Generally too narrow is no good. You're gonna have what we call knee valgus, and turning those toes out about 15 to 30 degrees seems to be optimal. So now that we found foot angle, foot width, and knee position, now we're gonna find the depth of the squat. So as you can see there, I gave up my lower back position and I was a little too low. Here I start to find out, hmm, this looks like a pretty good depth for me. So I go back down into that position, it looks really solid there, just a little bit further and I lose it. So you can see the optimal position for me is just below parallel. The initiation of the squat needs to come from both knee flexion and hip flexion, but in a simultaneous fashion. If you have too much knee flexion early and too much hip flexion early, you're not going to be in a great position at the bottom of the movement. So as you can see there, I went into knee flexion and hip flexion at the same exact time and I maintained a pretty good position throughout the squat. Another important consideration is having equal weight distribution in the feet. So you don't want to be too far forward on your toes and too far back on your heels. Again, staying down through the middle of the foot is going to keep you in the best position to drive up and out of the squat. Now we're going to review how to hold the barbell and maintain trunk position during the back squat. Now, the tendency is to have a tight upper torso, specifically the pecs. Now what occurs is the back goes into extension to compensate for this when holding the barbell. To try to counteract that, we're going to draw the elbows down and in, almost like a lat pull down. And you're also gonna to wanna to feel like you're trying to pull that barbell around your body. So it's tucking the elbows down and in, wrapping the hands around the bar, that helps maintain trunk stability. And now we'll review the two different back squat positions. There's low bar back squat and high bar back squat. The high bar back squat, the bar sits on the upper trapezius. This is a more common variation. The low bar back squat, you'll see a little bit more common with power lifting, sits on the back of the deltoids. Now we're gonna take a look at grip width. Now grip width is gonna be dependent on injury history and or shoulder mobility. So I have a torn labrum, so you'll see my hands are a little wider here. But generally speaking, you want your hands just outside of your shoulders if you have the mobility for it. So the low bar back squat, the trunk has a tendency to get lower to the ground, which puts a little bit more emphasis on the hamstrings, the glutes, and the lower back. The high bar back squat has a tendency to be more vertical in the trunk and places a little bit more emphasis on the quadriceps and knee flexion. So I personally like to low bar back squat. I feel like I have a more advantageous position there because I get to use my glutes and hamstrings a little bit more readily and I sink my hips a little bit further back. Now this is commonly used in powerlifting and is traditionally thought as a more advantageous lift for strength training versus the high bar squat which is more common. Now it's time to put everything together. As you can see here, I'm locking that bar against my back. I'm getting a good solid grip position and I'm drawing that bar down and back. Now everything's locked and loaded. Everything's getting real tight. Now I'm gonna go to walk out, which is one step, two steps, and a quarter step. You'll see I shuffle my feet slightly here, turn my toes out like we talked about. Now I lock my elbows down and in. I'm squeezing that bar as hard as I can into my back to create that upper trunk rigidity. And you can see I take a big breath each time. Now you can see I'm a little far forward. That is because I'm low bar back squatting. You can see my knees and hips break at the same time or go into flexion at the same time. I drive up, I make sure I rack the bar carefully and then drop. 
and lastly we'll talk about the prime movers which are the quadriceps and glute max as you can see those two are highlighted in red in this image those are our very powerful extensors of both the knee and the hip now on the concentric or the way up that's what's occurring we're going into extension of both knee and hip the hamstrings will also help the glute maximus during hip extension and help stabilize the knee joint. Spinal erectors and transverse abdominis will be what we consider stabilizers and they will help maintain good trunk position. And lastly, the gastrocnemius slash soleus will help maintain tibial position and not allow too much anterior translation. There you have it, how to squat. Thank you guys so much for checking it out. I hope you guys found it valuable and that there were some tips in there that you might have not known already. But for those of you who knew all of this and you're like, nothing new for me, well, you'd be surprised there's a lot of people that don't know how to squat out there and might find it very valuable. So I would appreciate if you comment, like, subscribe, you know, the whole nine there. I really appreciate each and every single one of you that tune into this channel and check out my content. It means the world to me. I mean it from the bottom of my heart. The fact that I have as many people that are listening to me and wanting to hear more about exercise just like seriously fires me the heck up. I use tech because, uh, you know, I don't want to get uh, demonetized from my millions of subscribers. I know you guys understand. But on the real, you guys checking out my channel means the world to me. It does. The fact that you guys are taking the time to listen to my content and actually consume it and then implement it and then comment share like the whole nine like that means so much to me it means that what i've gone to school for for the last five six years means something to somebody else out there outside of myself and that's huge again thank you all so much i appreciate you all i hope you guys have a great day this was the science of exercise on how to squat say you done.